Given that one of the last times I was working on the van, I had to water myself off, it was that hot. Today, it's so cold that I'm straddling a radiator. It's that cold. Okay, so I've got one step closer to building out the bulkhead. A lot of people seem to build the frame, screw it to the body, and then start attaching the ply on the back of that. I just worry that I'm really gonna struggle to get the ply on the back, I'm not gonna get it lined up correctly and stuff like that. So what I've decided to do is to do the stage approach where I build the frame of the bulkhead, I'm then taking it away, and I am putting the back ply board on, keeping it nice and thin on the back and because of the insulation that's going to go in the middle of it, I'm not worried about somebody putting their elbow through it or if you stuff a jacket down the back that it actually pushing the, the, the ply through. What I've done in order to get the ply to fit into the area that needs to be without it getting jammed up against the B-pillar frames, the metal parts, um, is actually, it was really easy to be honest, the easiest bit of scribing I've done. If you place the ply up against the frames and then just go round into the cab area, you've literally got a stencil. And all I've done is then stencil down that and cut it out with a jigsaw. So as you can see, what I've done is I've just offered up the ply to the B pillar here and then I've scribed, you can see the line that I've scribed, I've scribed it with a pencil against here so all I did was just rest that across and then put that up like that until it met. So today we're doing the headliner shelf and it's obviously quite intricate. You've got to get the cuts right, but we decided to basically break the sides up, left side, right side, to create one side, we did it in two. So you're gonna in total split it up into four bits. The edge to be able to get this side straight and that corner, the sort of center left to be able to get this part here and then just repeat the same for this side. You can see the stages that we went through. So we scribed this part first and got that right and then we scribed this part and essentially where we could see it didn't fit we then created a straight line between them and that's how we came up with this bit so you can see where this line is that marries up with where we missed off we then took these two bits into the van married them up together and then taped them down the middle uh, and then now we're going to test fit it one more time make sure it fits properly and then transfer it onto some wood. All we did was we used a combination of a contour gauge, Stanley blade, pencil and some tape and some cardboard. And good news is that it fits pretty much perfectly. We've decided we want 12 mil ply for our headliner shelf. So we've just propped the cardboard up on two bits of 
12 mil ply here which are individually on the brackets with these gaps we thought that it's because it actually goes um, backwards like that but actually it's a bit of an optical illusion is this side here is actually higher than that part so it's not that it's not that that's the gap is backwards this actually goes upwards um, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave it almost as a semi-deliberate air gap for stuff that is stored in this compartment here um, and that way we get a bit of airflow uh, so nothing goes mouldy at the back or anything like that but yeah that worked well and we're now going to take it uh, over to the plywood and cut it out in the plywood So the issue I've got here, the bulkhead that I've got at the minute is just clamped against the seat. The annoying thing about it being clamped against the seat is that it rattles when you move it against this little plastic bit. I want to be able to space it back a little bit so that I can perhaps hang a, a jumper or something like that off the back and that in any movement of the van it doesn't rattle. But the problem with that is that the ply that is going to rest against here actually sticks out past the door. I can't set it further backwards that way because it'll hit the seat and I can't fit it further that way because it'll hang over the door even more. The other issue is that with it in its position now there is a gap just here. I'll have to do something about filling this gap and this is pushed like that's not going any further. So there is always going to be this gap here. Essentially, I'm kind of stuck. So I don't really know what to do with it. Uh, my only thought is that I bring it outwards a little bit away from the cab and then I remove some of these buttons here. Specifically this one, this one. Blah 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 blah. Or do something like this is just a scrap bit of wood, but do something like that and just have a slope at the door frame. I'm not really sure what to do in all honesty. It's a bit of a head scratcher. But what I do know is that I need to get it resolved today because otherwise we just can't progress. We can't do the overhead cabinet. We can't put the shelf in. There's a lot of things riding on getting this bulkhead sorted. And yeah, I just want to move on.
I completely forgot to film it, but I covered the shelf, or at least one side of the shelf. Obviously this is the rebar that I used um, to support it, so it's going to prevent it from bowing here or flexing at the back. This is obviously going to be supported by the bulkhead. This is quite thick to be fair, um, so I don't suspect it's going to actually sag at all really much. Um, but I'm really happy with the clean lines. That's super clean. Couldn't get the exact carpet colour, but it matches the bulkhead and it's closer than the one that's lighter to it and the one that's darker to it. So, yeah, I have to make do with that. Next is to just get the bulkhead in. So let's do that. So, this whole, this gap here, in fact, you can't, yeah, you can just see it. See my fingers behind there. That gap's going to be closed up because the two parts at the rear are going to meet up but essentially that creates a really clean corner up there um, I'm really super happy with that corner so this part here and this part here are the bulkhead and this is permanently attached to here and it's scribed out to match this line but this is the shelf and then obviously this is the standard and then this up here is super strong like that is why yeah, so man. weak so weak well that's not going anyway so this rebar supporting the front and then this um cross beam here supporting the rear and that's giving it really really good structural integrity so yeah probably happy now let's just get it fixed in Yeah, you can see the screw heads, but I, what I've done is I've put a screw cap on the top of that. And that way the uh, the top of this bolt isn't gonna rip through the fabric. So it's a nice, it's nice and soft at the top there, essentially. Like I said, about the rebar, oh god that's dark, Whew. rebar at the back is going to prevent, if something rolls, it's going to prevent it tipping down there and potentially coming out and falling either on Emily or worse on me if I'm driving. <laughs> so I think not only is it going to provide the structural integrity that's required for this, um, but it's also going to provide uh, like a backstop if you like. The vents there yes there might be a bit of a thermal loss but this isn't thermally protected anyway so i think generally i wouldn't change anything about this to be honest apart from maybe the color but the color matches quite well i think it's just maybe my ocd uh, if anything we've got to the stage where we've done the bulkhead the main sort of structure of the bulkhead and we're wanting to put the back on it now so what's in progress is this bit here, where we're going to shape the where the bulkhead sticks out beyond the door level. Um, we're going to shape a kind of foam section here and trim it nicely. But to know where that needs to come out to, I need to know where I need to put this ply board on the back of this so that I can level it out to be able to fit one of the things we want, which is a, a blind here. Now I spent ages and ages and ages making sure that the inside of here, when you view it from the cab side, is nice and clean and tidy and there's not loads and loads of exposed edges or gaps and stuff like that. For me it's not as simple as just, I don't know, sticking a, a roller blind here and pulling it down or um, I don't know, curtains, like a rod with curtains. I'm also worried about the fact that because we've got the, the, the cooker here, the hob here, any kind of fabric is going to one draw in condensation from uh, or steam it's going to draw in steam it's going to draw in any smell but is also potentially a fire risk so i don't want that so what i'm going to do is create a kind of a shutter if you like one solid piece which slides up from here so my idea is this is just an off cut but i have something like that hidden behind uh, kind of like in between the bulkhead and the plyboard backing which will be pulled up like that 
and I'll have some kind of fastening mechanism at the top here and they will most probably be magnets. The magnets don't really need to be that strong because I can't see any reason why we would want to have this up whilst we're driving. It's not going to be on, I've seen people do like automated using actuators uh, to move it up and down on the switch of a button. If this was heavy or if it had, know, had a TV on it or something like that, then yeah, I'd, I'd say an actuator. But considering this is just a piece of 5mm ply with probably a trim on the top painted, then I think just a manual pull up, pull down mechanism is going to be fine. And from the other side, the other side will be carpeted, so it won't really look like it'll just look like a potentially look like a, a normal van cabin or a solid bulkhead. Um, which is going to provide a bit of security because it looks less like you can get in, I think. There's a, there's a mixture of things that we can do, but that's, that's my plan and that's what I'm going to get on with today. So I have to come around this way because we have done this and I might have sprayed a little bit too much foam. <laughs> it's like an alien has taken over the van. Um, the handle here is completely compressed in as is this it's completely wrapped around here and it's burst out of the out of the film I put um, on it so yeah didn't really go to plan but only because I used too much So the idea of all this, all this tape and all the cellophane and stuff like that was so that I could mould out the shape, fill the space with foam and it would expand and fill out into the, into the space I needed. Because the expanding foam doesn't stick to cling film, it would mean that the same way I was able to peel off the top there, the, the top surface, I'd be able to peel off the the back end because it wouldn't have stuck to the bulkhead, it wouldn't have stuck to the van body and it wouldn't have stuck to any of the kind of shelf carpeting or anything like that. So yeah, that's my plan, that's my grand scheme. So hopefully, hopefully this should all just kind of pop out in one unit and I should be able to kind of, well I should be able to put it back in as easy as I took it out and it should just be a perfect mould, but we'll see. Ugh. So, it kind of did do the trick to be fair. The concept worked well, I think. Although this looks like a big old mess. That is give or take the exact dimensions of this space here. Because the reason this tape was here is because I didn't want it to stick to the body. I also didn't want it to expand past this point and then start getting trapped in like the seatbelt mechanism, which is up here and then the seatbelt reel down here. The other thing is I didn't want it to wrap around the back of these uh, tension straps so that it was easier for it to be pulled out. Yeah. Which it does. It fits perfectly back in.
So just to talk through how I went about doing this, I deliberated a few ways to do it. I've never done fabric wrapping before. So you saw that I did the, the sort of the main structure underneath here, which was all foam, like spray foam in there. Obviously waited for that to go off and then um, carved it out. So that just comes out looking like, you know, just like your normal spray foam. And then once I carved that out to kind of like the shape that I wanted, I then put what's called a scrim foam. This is essentially just a closed cell foam on the top here with some scrim netting underneath. It's also called so foam. What this scrim netting does, it kind of holds all the foam together, but it also allows you to stitch into the foam and it'll hold a stitch. It's used primarily in automotive upholstery. So if you were to kind of peel back the cover on your leather seats, or if you have like a sort of a squidgy dash, if you were to peel that back, this is what would be underneath. Now you can get various um, thicknesses. So I went for four mil, that seems to be most commonly used in like luxury cars and stuff. But you can go all the way from like one mil up to 10 mil. I applied a glue, it's just a spray glue. The fact it's high heat was important for me because all of this is gonna be exposed to the, the sun um, and the heat. So that was really important. Essentially what you're looking at is a layer of foam with the scrim foam on top. After that, what I did was I apply the top layer and the top layer is a leatherette. Now what leatherette is, is a, a, it's essentially a plastic, but it is, it's got a, a, like a leather pattern on the top. It looks like leather. You get it in various different colors and, and grains, but I just bought a, a big roll of it, fairly inexpensively on, on eBay, to be honest. You can get super, super expensive, but this is only, what well, this is maybe like a millimeter thick, and it's got this sort of fabric backing, um, similar to the scrim foam. All I did was cut it down to size, and then apply that with the contact adhesive on the back, wrapped around the edge. It doesn't hide the imperfections the same way that carpet does, but given it was my first ever time using it, I think it went quite well. I've left a load of excess down here. So what I'll do is I'll foam out that area, apply all the layers like I did before, and I'll take the whole section out, and then I'll go and glue it all together like I did before. Well, <laughs> after months and months and months of issues, problems, delays, all sorts with this bulkhead, it is finally in, it is finally complete. There are a few bits we need to add a trim down here and up the sides and add magnets to this and all that sort of stuff. But the actual structure of it is now complete. It's in the place we want it to be in. The good thing about this is that it is um, semi-thermally protected. Previously, the idea was to use a bit of five mil ply and then put a bit of carpet on one side, a bit of paint on the other. And that's what we did do. But the, the five mil ply was just warping in the general humidity of, of the British weather. <laughs> that just meant that with the humidity of where we're planning to go, the hot countries, the cold countries, all that sort of stuff. It was clearly not going to serve its purpose very well. So in the end, I decided to create a bigger version of what I've done up here. Now that's going to be in another video, but what this is, is a thermal blind that you pull across the Max Air fan. And on this side, we decided rather than painting it white, we'd wrap it in the vinyl, in the same leatherette vinyl that we've done this in. So it actually ties in quite well. Now this whole bulkhead has actually been a real, real pain. But the only reason it's been a pain is because we thought that with the new Sprinter being pretty much based on the old Sprinter, we assumed that 
generally speaking, everything was going to be the same. So far, that's not been the case. The seats in the cab have not just had like a new fabric put over them. The whole structure of the seats is completely different. How far backwards the passenger seat is into the cargo area is completely different from the older Sprinter, which has meant that the way most people do their bulkhead hasn't worked for us at all. And it would mean that we would have the bulkhead coming out really, really far. Doing it this way has been a right pain but I'm thoroughly, thoroughly happy with it. All the work was worth it. So yeah, this really, really has been absolutely months in the making and we're just ecstatic. You could see from Emily's face how happy we were to get this done. But next up is doing the ceiling. We've already put these slats in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do slatted ceiling like that, but we're gonna do it in a slightly different way. So hopefully that'll be something exciting for you all. But other than that, I'm going to sign off this video now and you should join us either on our Instagram, on our YouTube or head on over to our website and you can see all the parts that we've used in this build, a few guides, plus some of our plans for the adventures that we're going to take Bessie to. So yeah, join us in the next one. It'll be good. See you there.